Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the IPC nomenclature that is what we have given to the previous complexes and on this topic we are going to talk about that is how we can give a chemical formula to the complex which is basically provided on the basis of IPC norm. So now let us understand this one. So friends in this topic we are going to talk about that is how we can give the chemical formula to the IPC nomenclature for a complex. So talking about the first one that is we have tetraamine aqua chloro cobalt 3 chloride. So how to give the name to this one. So first of all let us understand that is there are two parts over here that is the one which is the secondary entity and the one which is basically primary entity. But here we don't know that is how many moles of the primary atoms are basically present over here but we have a detail about the secondary entity or the coordination ligands so in this case we have tetraamine that is we could write it here as NH3 4 we have aqua that is we have H2 we have chloro that is only one Cl atom and this is nothing but cobalt so therefore we could write the chemical formula as so that should be square bracket or we could say that is the cobalt will be the one which will be presented because we always represent the metal or the central metal atom first whenever we are giving the formula and talking okay, about the next one that is we have that is NH3 four times so we could write it over here NH3 four times the next part is we have H2O then we can write Cl So this is what we have and here basically we can find that is the cobalt has an oxidation number of 3. So here it should have an overall charge of 2 plus. The reason behind that is because as we can see that is the NH3 and the H2O. This both two are basically the neutral ligands. But we have to satisfy the oxidation number of the cobalt to be basically 3 plus. So in this case this Cl or this chlorine atom obviously it is a negative charge ligand. So that's the reason it will have an oxidation state of minus 1. But if this minus 1 if it transfers to the other side that is based on the oxidation number formula. And in that case we will get to know about that is this one or this complex will have a charge of 2 plus so if this complex has a charge of 2 plus on it so we have the primary entity and that is nothing but or the ionized entity in this case it is chloride so that's the reason there will be two moles of chloride and this is nothing but the formula for this IUPC name and even though we can cross check it for example suppose if this primary entity it has two that is chlorine atoms so therefore we could say that is the overall charge for this one it would be 2 minus so for this complex it would be 2 plus so now let us understand that is what would be the oxidation state for this cobalt so for this cobalt we could say that is cobalt plus 4 moles of NH3 plus 1 mole of H2O and plus 1 mole of Cl which has an oxidation state of minus 1 and the overall charge of this complex is going to be plus 2 so in this case we have got to know that is this are the neutral ligands that is NH3 and H2 are the neutral ligands so therefore we could say that is this is the plus 2 and suppose if this minus 1 goes there it converts into plus 1 and that's the reason that the cobalt has an oxidation state of 3 and which is already present here so therefore this is nothing but the formula for the coordination compound using IUPC norm that is what we have discussed so therefore this was the first one and now let me talk about the next one so talking about the next one that is we have to give the formula for tris ethylene nickel 3 ion so what are the ligands that are been associated to the central metal atom in this case it is a nickel so we could write it here in this manner that is the central metal atom it is nothing but nickel and this is nothing but tris ethylene diamond tris in this case it means 3 so that is the reason that ethylene diamond can be represented by en that is 3 moles of ethylene diamine so which are basically associated with this nickel or this central metal atom and is there any other ligand no there is no other ligand and talking okay, about that is this has an oxidation state of 3 nickel has an oxidation state of 3 but we also understand that this ethylene diamine is a neutral ligand so whatever the charge will be on this complex it will be the oxidation number of the central metal atom so in this case it is found to be 3 so therefore I could write it here as 3 plus 
and why i have written three plus only because this is a transition metal and this is a d block metal and metal have a positive oxidation state and that is what i have written over here and if you notice that it ends with iron that means there is a positive charge or negative charge or some charge on this complex and talk about that is it doesn't have a primary entity over here that is not on the right side and not on the left side so therefore this is nothing but just an iron this is not a complete compound this is just a tris ethylene diamine nickel 3 iron and this is the formula for it and now let me discuss about the next one so the next what we have is potassium tetrahydroxo zincate so in this case the central metal atom is nothing but zinc so therefore we could write it here that is in square bracket and this is zinc and talking about the ligands so the ligand in this case is hydroxo it is not potassium in this case the potassium which is basically a cation it will be on the primary entity on or on the primary sphere so therefore here we could write potassium as k but here we are not mentioning the number of it because obviously we have to give the formula to this one so that the overall charge for or the overall or the oxidation state of the zinc it should be two so in this case let us understand there is how much ligands are there so there are basically hydroxyl ligand and hydroxyl ligand is nothing but oh that is known as hydroxyl and how many ligands are there that is tetra that means four so therefore we could write zn oh the hydroxyl ligand is the one which is a negatively charged ligand and that's the reason that suppose if we talk about the oxidation number for zinc in this case it has been found to be plus four because suppose if you are if you are not considering potassium and suppose if this is the complex that is what we have so in that case we'll get the oxidation number of zinc as that is plus four but here we have the oxidation number of zinc as plus two so that means there should be a negative charge over here and that is how basically this oh that is four moles of oh it will try to satisfy this oxidation state of zinc in such a way that is the overall oxidation state of the zinc it has been found to be two so in that case this one would have that is two minus charge then only this zinc will have that is oxidation state of plus two so if this complex or this iron has a two minus charge on it so that means there should be an overall charge of that is two plus but here we have potassium and potassium has an oxidation state of plus one so to balance it we have to multiply this by two and now the overall charge or the overall oxidation state here that is in the primary entity it is been found to be plus two and in this case it has been two minus so therefore it has been satisfied so this is nothing but the chemical formula but yes there should be no mentioning about this charge on it but this is what i have mentioned just to explain so therefore the overall formula that is what we can do is we can write the formula as k2 zn oh4 and that's it so this was one of the most easiest one and now let me talk about the next one so friends the next what we have is we have dichloro bisethylene diamine platinum 4 nitrate so let me give you an idea that is there are two that is entities that is primary and secondary so in this case this nitrate is nothing but the primary one and the rest of the thing they are nothing but the complex ion that is with the help of a square bracket that is this is platinum and what are the other ligands that are being associated to this one so that for here it is dichloro that means we could write cl2 this ethylene diamine that means two moles of ethylene diamine and that could be represented as en2 so this is what we have represented about the iron but what about this primary entity so therefore it is nothing but it is nitrate so we could write it here as no3 but how many moles of nitrate are surrounding this central metal atom as in they are in a primary entity and the overall charge of this platinum should be plus four but we understand that is the ethylene diamine which has an oxidation state of zero or it is a neutral ligand and that's the reason that suppose if this cl that has an oxidation state of minus one if we calculate the oxidation state of platinum in this case that is for this complex suppose if we are expelling this no3 so in that case we'll get plus two as an oxidation state for platinum so in that case we should understand that is here there should be a two positive charge more so that's the reason we could say suppose if this one would have two plus charge on it or the oxidation state of this complex or the suppose the overall charge of this complex suppose if it is found to be two plus that means that this no3 should be present two times and then only the oxidation state of this platinum would be found to be 
plus 4 so therefore this is nothing but the formula for dichloro basically diamine platinum 4 nitrate and that's it so now let's move to the next one so the next that is what we are going to talk about is sodium hexanitro cobaltate so now let us understand that is how we can give the chemical formula for this one so here let me explain you that is there are two entities over here that is the primary entity and this is nothing but the secondary entity and in that case the cobalt is the one that is basically the central metal atom so therefore this is cobalt that is what i have represented over here that is the chemical formula and there is the ligand and that is nitro but nitro is present that is six times so that's the reason i would write it over here as no2 six times but this is not over yet obviously the cobalt has an oxidation state of three so in this case the oxidation state of the cobalt it will be three if we understand what is the oxidation number of for this nitrite so in that case this nitrite has an oxidation state of minus one so suppose if we are talking about this complex solely so in that case we'll get to know that is this complex will have the cobalt which has an oxidation state of plus six the reason behind that is because NO2 is a negatively charged ligand and it has a charge of minus 1. So therefore the overall charge of this complex it, it is found to be plus 6. But we have to manage the cobalt to have an oxidation state of 3 plus. So that means there should be already a negative charge on here. So therefore suppose if I talk about that is if there is 3 minus charge on it. So in that case, suppose if we calculate the oxidation state of this cobalt, then it can be found to be that is plus 3. And suppose if this complex has a charge of 3 plus on it, so therefore the sodium that should be present over here, that is in the primary entity, it should be 3 moles because each sodium has an oxidation state of plus 1 and now they would be completely balanced. That is, suppose if this is plus 3 and this is minus 3, so now they both are balanced. That is the primary as well as the second valency. They both are balanced now or satisfied. So in that case, we could say that is the complex has a molecular formula that is Na3CONO2 six times. And that's it. So this was nothing but the chemical formula for the sodium hexanitro cobaltate. And here, the word that is cobaltate, it represents that is there is a negative charge on this complex that is negative charge on this anionic complex and that's the reason the word ends with ate and that's the reason the suffix is ate and that's it and now let's move to the next one so the next that is what we have is we have hexaamine cobalt 3 sulfate so in that case as you have understood that is there are two entities that is the primary one and the secondary one so in this case we are going to talk about the secondary one and in that case we have got to know that is the cobalt is the one which is the central metal atom so therefore this is nothing but cobalt and it is associated with that is six that is ammonia molecules so in that case nh3 would be here as six but the cobalt has an oxidation state of 3 plus so in that case suppose if we talk about the oxidation number of this cobalt in this complex solely so in this case the oxidation number of this complex it would be zero but for to satisfy the oxidation number of the cobalt to be 3 plus so therefore there should be basically so4 here in such a manner that is we could have the oxidation number here as 3 plus but we also understand that is the sulfate that is so4 which has an oxidation state of minus one so therefore the so4 which has an oxidation state of minus two so in this case suppose if it is found to be suppose if i would say three then the overall charge of this complex it would be found to be that is plus six but we also understand that is the oxidation number of the cobalt should not be plus six it should be plus three so therefore we will multiply this by two and now this is nothing but the chemical formula for hexaamine cobalt 3 sulfate and now let me talk about the next one so the next one that is what we have is we have sodium hexanitro n cobaltate 3 so in this case there are two entities that is the primary one and this is the secondary one so in therefore the secondary sphere consists of the ligands which is nothing but nitrito and in that case there are six nitrito that are with surrounding the cobalt metal atom so in this case the nitrito is nothing but no2 and then also we have that is six moles of no2 that are basically surrounding the central metal atom that is cobalt and here the alphabet n represents that is there is a bond of attachment of the central metal atom that is cobalt 
to the nitrogen and not the oxygen so therefore this is what we have a complex over here but also there is sodium that has been present on the primary entity so therefore we have to represent sodium over here but suppose if we talk about the oxidation number of this cobalt suppose if we don't have that is sodium associated with this complex and each no2 has a charge of minus one and there are six that is moles of no2 so therefore there will be overall charge of here as plus six but we have to maintain here till plus three so that's the reason we have to balance the primary as well as the secondary entity and in that case basically we could mention the sodium as three moles of sodium and then only the overall complex will have a charge of that is three plus and if this overall charge on this complex that is the cationic complex if it has a charge of three plus on it then by doing the oxidation number method we could find that is the cobalt has an oxidation state of plus three so therefore this is nothing but the chemical formula for sodium hexanitrito and cobaltate and the reason that is it is mentioned here the suffix has 80 because this complex i'm talking about this one so it will have a charge of three minus or a negatively charged complex and that's it and now let's move to the next one so the next that is what we have is potassium trioxalate to chromate so in this case again it consists of two entities that is the primary one and the secondary one so the secondary one consists of that is the chromium as the central metal atom and it is associated with three moles of oxalate and oxalate is nothing but c2o4 so therefore i could represent it over here as three but the overall charge on the chromate or suppose if we talk about that is the oxidation state of the chromium it has been found to be that is three plus over here so that means that the overall charge of this complex it should be that is in such a way that is the oxidation state of chromium it should be three plus but c2o4 that is it will have an oxidation state of that is three minus so in that case we could say that is if there is a charge of minus three on here but each c2 O4 that is this oxalato has an overall oxidation state of minus 2 so therefore this one would have an overall oxidation state of that is minus 6 so in that case so therefore here should be that is the overall charge of minus 3 then only this minus 3 and this one would be plus 6 so in that case the overall charge of the chromium that is the oxidation state of the chromium it will be plus 3 and since here basically this ion complex has a charge of minus 3 so therefore so as to satisfy we have to use potassium and that also 3 moles of potassium then only the overall charge of this two will be satisfied and that's the reason that the complex will have the formula that is K3CrC2O4 thrice and that's it so therefore this is how basically we could give the chemical formula to the ipc nomenclature for a coordination compound and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood that is how to write or how to give the chemical formula to the ipc nomenclature and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much